This video is a product of the Xi'an Xu University and University of Alberta collaboration project called the High End Project of Foreign 1000 Plan Experts. The 1000 Talent Program was awarded for the sixth installment of thousands of foreign experts planned to work at Xi'an Xu University between 2016 and 2019, of which was extended for another two years until 2020. Dr. Papadogli visited Xi'an Xiu University, located in the Shanxi province in China. Xi'an Xiu University is the only multidisciplinary college in northwest China characterized by petroleum and petrochemicals. There, Dr. Papadogli was given guest professor title and a ceremony was held, as seen in the picture. The following is a list of presentations, seminars, and talks that Dr. Bob Dugley gave during his stay in the Xi'an Xu University. On November 9, 2016 and March 22, 2019, Dr. Bob Dugley gave a lecture titled, What Should I Do Before I Graduate to Build a Strong Petroleum Engineering Career at the Xi'an Xu University. Some of the content from his talk was covered in our part two of the Global Understanding of Petroleum Engineering series under the same title. The following are research articles that were published during EOG RRC's collaboration with Xi'an Xiu University. The research topics include fracture surface roughness study, solvent injection optimization, solid flow and fractures, and oil recovery from tight sands. One of the notable papers from this collaboration is from 2015, titled Effect of Surface Roughness and Lithology on the Water Gas and Water Oil Relative Permeability Ratios of Oil Wet Single Fractures, published in the International Journal of Multiphase Flow, written by Baba Dogley, Raza, Wren, and Devley. The experimental setup used in the study is as shown. The dimension of the artificial fracture used is 20 cm by 20 cm. In this paper, after manufacturing the 20 by 20 transparent replicas of fractures developed under the tensional load, constant injection rate displacement experiments were performed. Saturation distribution against time was visually monitored and the residual phases were determined for seven fracture samples of different rock types. A limestone fracture model with an average grain size of 0.8 mm was used for the water displacement experiment with gas. These blocks were fractured by the Brazilian test. The upper and lower images are the side views of the limestone model. The water saturation change for the water displacing gas case can be seen in this video. Water displacing gas is observed in the video on the left side, and water displacing oil is displayed in the video on the right side. For the water driving gas experiment, water was injected into air filled fractures at a rate of 20 cm3 per minute until no change was observed in the saturations. For the water driving oil experiment, oil was injected first, starting with the rate of 10 cm3 per minute and gradually increasing it to 100 cm3 per minute to ensure that the fracture model was fully and homogeneously saturated with oil. Water was then injected into the oil-filled fracture at a rate of 20 cm3 per minute until no change was observed in the saturations. This figure is from a paper published in the Journal of Petroleum Science and Engineering in 2018. The topic is, 
an experimental study to determine optimal injection strategies for water alternating solvent process in green and brown fields, and it was written by Bob Dogley and Chow. Experiments were carried out using the vertically situated core holder with a sand pack of 11 centimeters in length and 3 centimeters in diameter. The sand pack, made of pure silica sand, with an average porosity of 30%, was saturated with a light crude oil, 14 centipose at 25 degrees Celsius. For the oil wet cases, before the injection experiments, the sand pack was treated by a wettability alteration chemical known as surfacil, which is a siliconizing fluid. The following figures display the effect of water flooding history on the water alternating solvent injection. Similar to the previous cases, with no water injection history, the water wet sample yielded a better performance during the period of one pore volume water heptane injected, regardless of the sequence and slug size. In the long run, after one pore volume injection, the effect of initial water became more significant on the sequence of injected material. As the amount of initial water increases, it can be stated that starting with solvent is not advisable for a better, ultimate recovery. This is from a paper titled Visual Analysis on the Effects of Fracture Surface Characteristics and Rock Type on Propent Transport in Vertical Fractures by Huang, Babadogli, and Li. A total of five experiments were conducted to examine the effects of roughness on the propent transport flow behavior in vertical fractures. The images in the picture were captured at different times. Glass refers to the surface of the fracture model which was smooth, and as seen, the sand particles gradually settled down to the bottom of the fracture model. A sand dune appeared at about 40 seconds and the size of it increased along with the continuous injection. The sand dune appeared to be dark in color, indicating that the sand particles were tightly packed up in the fracture. Limestone, marble, granite, and tight sandstone are the rough fracture models used for the prop and flow. We can obviously see that the propent flow in the rough fracture is rather different from the propent flow in the flat fracture model. The rough nature of the fracture surface enhances settling of the sand particles. Let's watch this obvious difference between the flat surface and rough surface experiments in the next video. Part 3 of our Global Understanding of Petroleum Engineering series titled Roughness Effect on Fracture Flow and Petroleum Engineering discusses further on the roughness effect on fracture flow and its mechanism phenomena. Please use the links provided to check our Facebook and YouTube page for more information. Thank you for watching!